الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون لهم البشرى في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة لا تبديل لكلمات الله ذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العظيم If we look at the common teachings of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam, the gist of all the teachings of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam was that we should please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we do has to be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the gist of all the teachings of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. And always obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ana'abudullaha wa attaquuh. Ana'abuduhu wa ati'oon. Obey Allah, have the taqwa of Allah. Obey Allah and follow me. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey me. And these ayahs are repeatedly mentioned in Quran al Kareem with the stories of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. And this is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeatedly mentioning these ayahs with the stories of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam to tell us that this was the gist of all the teachings of all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. That human beings become obedient servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the true obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come by having the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it was only do things, these things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will like you, it simply means they are only actions without feelings. And we all know that actions without the true feeling behind it they really don't mean too much. Sometimes you smile to some people and talk to them very nicely and they'll tell you, okay, you're just trying to make me happy, aren't you? So the person knows you may not have that love for the person that you're trying to show. And that person would like to have assurance that whatever you're doing is not only just to please me, you really care about me. The feeling that's behind it. And this is what the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam taught their followers how to develop the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the actions that we perform, the physical actions like salah, like we fast, and many other ibadahs. There are hundreds of things that we do. But what is the feeling, the real feeling behind these ibadahs? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ The people of Iman, they love Allah the most. <coughs> and this is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was teaching Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhi wa jma'in how to develop the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the action is being performed, this is not only an action that we are doing to show that yes, I'm a mu'min, to satisfy myself or to prove to others or to protect myself from the adab of if I don't, don't do it, then I will be punished. I have no choice. No, the real ruh behind this action is that this person loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the person do whatever this person is doing. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ 
A person who would carry will have four qualities in him or her. That person's iman is perfect. The sign of the perfectness of the iman is that the person should have these four qualities. Number one, to love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Allah is so great now in this person's heart that he likes people only for the sake of Allah. <coughs> so even his love for others is because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which reminds me reading in one of the narrations. It's not a hadith, it's in a book of a history. That once Sayyidina al-Hassan radiallahu anhu asked his father Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He said, Dad, do you love me? And yes, son, I do. Do you love my brother too? Yes. And he kept on adding some more names in the list. Do you love this person? Do you love this person? Yes. Dad, but I heard that when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're supposed to love only Allah. <coughs> and then, Love for more than one person does not get into the same heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِّنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي جَوْفِي Allah have not placed two hearts in the chest of any person. This is not to tell us that you don't have to do the research anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us about our physical body that don't try to find two hearts in any person's chest. This is to tell us that if we carry one thing in this heart, then the opposite of that will not enter there. If we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the love of the dunya will not be there. You love one person, the love of the enemy cannot be in there. So he's saying that, in this case, if you have the love of so many people in your heart, Simply means the love of Allah is missing there. Of course, those were the people who could ask these type of questions. And even in their childhood, they are thinking about these things. About the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ali radiallahu anhu replied to him, he said, Son, I love you, your brother, your uncle, and everyone that you asked me about. I love all of those people because Allah asked me to love you. If it wasn't that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me to love you, I would, not, I would never love you. This is because Allah asked me to love you. So I love you because I love Allah and Allah asked me to love you, so I would love you. And the people that Allah will ask me not to love, I will not love them. Alhamdulillah. A person carries the love only for the sake of Allah. Four qualities that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioning as a sign of a perfect iman. The sign of not only something minor. This is the greatest sign the person could carry for a greatest achievement in the world. Perfect Iman. Four signs. Number one, to love only for the sake of Allah. And if a person dislikes someone, hates someone, it has to be only for the sake of Allah. After the battle of Badr, Al Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa jama'in were discussing the events of Badr. The son of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq radiallahu anhu said to him that during the battle of Badr, you were just under my sword. Had I moved my sword, you would be gone. But I said to myself, it's my father. 
I'll let him go. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu right there saying, son, but if you would have been under my sword at that time, I would not have let you go. Because at that time, you came to oppose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You came to fight Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than I love you. One of the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa sallam made a mistake. And that was a major mistake. He made a major mistake. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the wahi was informed that this is what the sahabi has done. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him for the explanation. And the other sahaba ridwan allahi alayhi wa were also there. They all wanted to know, they all knew something have done this. Who did it? We don't know. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called him and asked him, Why did you do this for? His name was Hatib radiallahu anhu. Now, as he asked him, everyone knew that he is the one who did it. Normally, it wasn't Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's habit to talk about these type of things in public. Now people, all the people know that this is what this person have done. Normally, he wouldn't mention people's faults in public. He would call the person on the side and talk to him. And if he doesn't want to call on the person on the side and talk to the person, then he would not mention the person's name. He would make a general statement in the masjid, how come some people do things like this? They shouldn't do anything like this. Aisha radiallahu anha says in the hadith that this was the general habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he would not mention the name of the person. He would not specify a person or a group. He would say, مَا بَالُ أَقْوَى مِنْ يَفْعَلُونَ كَذَا How come there are people who do this? But in this situation, he's dealing with it totally differently than he would normally deal with other situations. He calls the person in public and then he asked him, why did you do this? Now people knew that he is the one who did it. Why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do this? We will find that inshallah in a minute. But as soon as people found out and Umar radiallahu was standing there, he gets so upset. <coughs> did you do this? He is the one who did it? Ya Rasulullah, Allow me to kill this munafiq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, Umar. وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ لَعَلَّ اللَّهِ اطَّلْعَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَدْرٍ فَقَالَ إِفْعَلُوا مَا شِئْتُمْ فَقَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَكُمْ Umar, this person was with us in the battle of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at these people of the battle of the Badr and He told them, do whatever you wish, you have been forgiven. So don't call him munafiq, he's a mu'min, he made a mistake and he is forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the mistake that he has made. Look how upset Umar radiallahu anhu is. That in front of him, on his face, He's saying, دَعْنِي أَقْتُلُ هَذَا المنافق. Allow me to kill this munafiq. Now when this person heard this, how upset this person would be with Umar radiallahu anhu. He's calling me munafiq and he's asking the permission to kill me. It didn't take more than a minute for everything to change now, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying to Umar, that Umar, 
he was within Badr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven these people of, the, of, the, of Badr. Next minute, you see, Umar radiallahu anhu hugs that person. He says, my brother, subhanallah, you're such a great person. Love for the sake of Allah, hate for the sake of Allah. How could you have such a control over your heart? A minute ago you are so upset. Next minute, you are hugging that person. Just changed by hearing one word that he is forgiven by Allah, which means Allah likes him. If Allah likes the person, Allah has forgiven him. Umar cannot carry no hard feelings against him. That's it. Umar, as soon as he knows that Allah likes, likes this person, then said for Umar radiallahu anhu. His heart changed. It's not okay. It will take me some time. I'm so upset. Just leave me alone right now. I'm trying to control my emotions right now. The person is sweating. No. It didn't take no time. That's it. Subhanallah. Ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah. Love for only for the sake of Allah and disliking people for the sake of Allah. When he thought that this person has opposed the deen of Allah. The mistake was such where it could, people thought that this person is opposing the deen of Allah. Umar radiallahu anhu is upset. All the Sahaba are upset. Next minute they know that no, he really doesn't mean to oppose the deen of Allah. It was a mistake and Allah has forgiven him. Allah has forgiven him. Who is me now to carry any hard feelings against him? MashaAllah. <laughs> the situation of the heart changed. For us it may take weeks and months before the situation of our heart will change after knowing no, this person has changed. Now this person is not like he was before. Still, we would always be looking at him as what he was before. Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He had a difficult time when he was in Makkah Mukarramah and that was when he would go his home. His father was very upset with the Prophet ﷺ because he wasn't Muslim yet. So his father would always say something about Rasulullah ﷺ. And how can Abu Bakr take something like this with the love that he has for Rasulullah ﷺ? He can't take it. And his father knows because he loves Prophet ﷺ so much, he would always, to hurt the feelings of his son, he would always say something against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went home in the same situation. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as soon as he heard those words, he couldn't control himself. He just started crying. He went back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu crying. Rahmatul lil alameen. A mother can't see her child crying. We can't see our people crying. Here Rahmatul lil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees his beloved one crying. He loved Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Before continuing with this, reminding me of the love of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and how much Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa loved Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu says once, me and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu got into some argument. They were very close friends. These were the people who are normally in the Front of behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa say that we used to 
keep that position for them because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an announcement لِيَلْيَنِي مِنْكُمْ أُلُوا الْأَحْلَامِ وَالنُّهَا The most intelligent and the wise people and people of understanding should be closest to me. And this is why we used to allow these two Sahaba Ridwan Allah to stay as close as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as possible, keeping themselves little away that is also for the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that people with good understanding, intelligent people, people have good understanding of the deen, they should stay close to me. So the Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhi wa they love Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that they, love, they would like to be closer. But they would allow Abu Bakr and Umar to be closer because that will fulfill the instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were always close, and they were close to each other. And both of them knew the virtues of each other as they had heard it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with that type of friendship, relationship, after all we are human beings, so they got into some type of disagreement. Umar radiallahu anhu, of course, these were not the people who would start cursing at each other and now shouting at each other and raising voice. No, upset and disliking the other person, disagreeing, disagreeing with the other person. Right away, go and talk to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in this situation, it was the mistake of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu was right; he was correct. So therefore, Umar radiallahu anhu thought. I have the upper hand today. So he runs to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah, look, this is what Abu Bakr did to me. And Umar radiallahu anhu says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face turned red. He got upset. He is angry. He is extremely angry. And then he says to Umar, Would you leave my friend alone for me? Would you stand bother would you stop bothering my friend? How dare you complain against Abu Bakr? Umar radiallahu anhu says the situation is totally opposite now here. I thought that I was right and I was I have the upper hand and I know the situation. I'm right. But Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is upset with me now. And right there um, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes in. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, I'm sorry. But it is true, it was my mistake. Umar is right, Ya Rasulullah. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is still upset with, with Umar. Put yourself into that position now. Into the position of Umar. And let's see what will happen to us. Forget about being in that position. When people read this hadith, they can't understand. Why is he upset with Umar radiallahu anhu? 1400 years later, people are getting upset about it. Ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah. This is what we understand from these hadiths. This is, this is a hadith that would really explain it to us. That although Umar radhi, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu made a mistake, okay, that was something that he has something wrong that he has done to you. But don't you realize that he is loved by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So for the sake of Allah, you must love Abu Bakr. For my sake, for whatever he has done to me now, I should hate him. Okay? He has done something wrong. But there is another position there, and that is. The Prophet of Allah loves him. And if Prophet of Allah loves him, Allah loves him. That is another position there. That Umar didn't see it at that time. As soon as he saw Rasulullah being upset with him, he realized that regardless of what Abu Bakr does to me, he can cut me into pieces. But he is the one that is loved by Allah and his messenger. How can I complain against Abu Bakr? He realized his mistake. Today we don't see it. Umar realized his mistake 
and he's apologizing to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'm sorry, ya Rasulullah, it is my mistake. What was the mistake of Umar? It's not that he is wrong in this situation, and Abu Bakr was right. No, Abu Bakr made a mistake. Umar was correct, but Umar radiyallahu anhu did not look at the other position of Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. And here, as he's reminded, he realized, no, I must love Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. Even if he did this, I must love him. And that love, now he realizes that that love requires that even if he does something that I don't like, let it go. It's only he has done it to me. Am I so important? Habbalillah wa abghadalillah. Loves for the sake of Allah and dislike for the sake of Allah. Let me change the wordings of this example. Now. You go to a scholar of Islam and you know it from all the sources that he is a great scholar. He is a waliullah, he is a great person. You go and sit there, he doesn't even look at you. And you felt that he really paid no importance to you. <coughs> sit there for half an hour. As you are leaving, I'm leaving, Salaam Alaikum. Okay. Now you leave that place. What would be our feeling? Is he a Waliullah? Is he a scholar? Only because his treatment to me, now I have no regards for this person whatsoever. Whereas I know as a reality that all the people have told me, all the students have told me, all the scholars have told me, everyone confirmed that he is a great person. He is a great muhaddis, he is a great professor, he is a great scholar of Islam, he is a very God-fearing person, he is a very strict in following the sunnahs. Whatever that might be, look what he has done to me. Now we can understand, Ahabbalillahi wa abghadalillah. We go over it very quickly. We don't understand it. Love for Allah and disliking for the sake of Allah. Another person. We go to another person. A person, no deen, no iman. <coughs> but he respected us. He honored us. He offered us a lot of things. Here, sit here. Sit on this couch. Have this meal with me. See how great this person is. Is this hubfillah and bukhtfillah? Or this is hubfil nafs and bukhtfil nafs? Love for our nafs and disliking for our nafs. Hating for our nafs. <coughs> this is our normal position. This is where we stand. We like people, although we may claim for deen. Let that person of deen say something about us. That's it. That deen is gone now. What happened to all of that deen that we were talking about? Did he do anything against <coughs> deen now? No, all he did was he did not respect me. That's it. Another person who disrespects <coughs> deen, who says everything about deen, but he respects me, he's a great person. This is our normal behavior. Imagine who's important, we or deen. Our action and our reaction to these situations reveals what's in our heart, regardless of what we say with our tongue. We can say whatever we want. This reveals what's in there. <coughs> and because of this, we see a lot of people deprived from deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They think they are great in deen, and I'm only following deen, and because he did not, he's not, I don't really think he is what his uh, people claim about him. It's only this person's nafs. Nothing more than this person's nafs who is telling him because he treated you in this way so he cannot be a great person.
or great person, the sign of greatness is a person would respect me. This will be the sign of greatness. Man ahabba lillahi wa abghada lillah. A person who loves for the sake of Allah and who hates for the sake of Allah. We get into a situation. Great people. Great people who are great followers of deen and God-fearing people. People following the sharia, following the sunnah. They pay no attention to us. If this person really has love for the sake of Allah, will still continue having love for this person. And my feeling is, when I see that situation, this is what we learn from our scholars of deen, that because I, it looks like because of my sins, Allah is keeping him away from me. I need to clean myself. I need to purify myself and come back. Because of my sins, Allah is keeping him away from me. And this is really a fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects his true servants. If we would protect our people, our children, our souls from an ajasa that we see down there, we will not step on it. What can be worse najasa than the najasa of the sins and of the nifaq? If Allah protects his people against that sin and nifaq and the, from the hearts that are carrying the sin and nifaq, it's well understandable. Now this person will look at it from that angle instead of looking at it, oh, because he didn't do it, so he's not a great person. Right understanding of everything. And, but that will come when the nafs is out of the picture. When the sincerity is there. When the truthfulness is there. When the person has the attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When that love for Allah is there. I don't remember if it was Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu or some of the tabi'een who saw a person who was insane. A person on the street, he was coming back from home, from masjid, to his, going to his home, and he sees a person who was insane. This person, his saliva was dripping of his mouth. <coughs> all over his clothing and very dirty clothes. So this person takes him to his home and he asked his family if the lunch was ready. They said, yes, it's ready for you. So he calls for the lunch and then with his own hand, he's feeding that person. And on that day, they had prepared a dish that was very favorable of this person. He liked that dish. So he started feeding him that food, specifically he's feeding him that dish. So they said to him, there is so much other food also, and we don't have too much of this, you love this one, so why don't you eat it? And he doesn't know what he's eating. This is which is a fact. You can feed him anything, he doesn't know what he's eating. If you have dealt with those people, you know that you feed them things that really have no taste, they would eat it, they don't care. There are people in that position. I have seen them. So, they said to him, you know, he doesn't know what he's eating, just feed him some of the other dishes that we had. Subhanallah, look at this reply. He says, if he doesn't know, the one for whom I'm feeding him, he knows what I'm feeding him. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what I'm feeding him. And Allah knows if I'm feeding him what I love to eat myself or I'm feeding him something else. I'm doing it for Allah. The love for Allah requires him that feed him what you love to have for yourself. This love will teach us a lot once the love gets into the heart. So Umar radiallahu anhu, 
as soon as he heard that, he saw that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upset with him because he is complaining against Umar radhi, against Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Right away he apologized, Ya Rasulullah, I'm sorry. And he realized that his mistake was that he should love Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu for the sake of Allah. If Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did something wrong to him, that's it, forgive Abu Bakr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he explained it. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started apologizing and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm sorry, it was my mistake. Umar was correct. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Umar, Umar, don't you people realize that the time when you people rejected me, at that time Abu Bakr was supporting me? The time when you people were disbelieving in me, at that time Abu Bakr was a believer? No one have helped me more than Abu Bakr did. I have paid everyone in this world for all the favors those people have done to me with the exception of Abu Bakr and that's only I can never pay him, only Allah will pay him for it in Akhirah. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَدَعُونِي صَاحِمِي أَوْ كَمَا قَالْ Would you leave then my friend alone for me? For my sake, just leave him alone. Teaching them, أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ Love for the sake of Allah. And hating people for the sake of Allah. So I was saying Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه is love for Allah and his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. He goes home, and Abu Quhafa, his father, says something against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying. Rahmatun lil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sees his close friend, his beloved one is crying. He asked him, what's wrong Abu Bakr? Who hurt you? Who disturbed you? What makes you cry Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. I can't hear a single word against you, Ya Rasulullah. And here, this is my father. I went home and he said this, he said things about you. I can't take this situation anymore. I don't know what to do, Ya Rasulullah. Just pray to Allah for me and for his hidayah. There was so much effect of this on the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Right away he raises his hands. And he makes dua for the hidayah of Abu Quhafa, the father of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. As soon as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu heard this dua, that's it. He knows, he knows what's next now. He runs to his home. As soon as he entered the home, he sees what he's expecting now. Abu Quhafa is saying, Abu Bakr, where did you go? I was waiting for you. Yes, dad, what do you need? I want to take the shahada. I'm ready to take the shahada. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, okay, let's go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he takes him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now Abu Bakr enters there, he's smiling. Ya Rasulullah, my father is here and he would like to take the shahada. How happy Abu Bakr would be at that time. And his father took the shahada. The next thing Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu says, Ya Rasulullah, I would have been happier. It would make me more happy if your uncle would have been Muslim than my father. If this was your uncle, I would have been more happy. Because it was your happiness for your uncle. If you see your uncle taking the shahada, that was your happiness. And I would have been more happy because I see you being happy. Subhanallah, this is the love. Ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah. A person who loves for the sake of Allah and he hates for the sake of Allah. 
Al-Abbas radiyallahu anhu, who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uncle, he always used to give Umar radiyallahu anhu a hard time. You know Umar radiyallahu anhu's personality. He wants to see everything correct and in order and in place. And Abbas radiyallahu anhu intentionally, he used to tease Umar radiyallahu anhu and do things where Umar radiyallahu anhu will be upset. You know, in a friendly mood. But he's always putting him in that position. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Umar radiyallahu anhu to collect the sadaqat, collect the zakah. And Umar radiyallahu anhu, he went to all the people, he went to Al-Abbas radiyallahu anhu. Abbas radiyallahu anhu knew that Umar would be coming to collect the zakat. So he goes and he gives the zakat to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now Umar goes there. He said, I'm here to collect the zakat. I'm not giving no zakat. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me to collect the zakat. I don't care. I'm not giving no zakat. Are you rejecting to pay the zakat? He said, no, I'm not giving no zakat. Go and do your work. Now Umar, how can he take this? And he gets upset. But these people, their hearts were clean and pure. Umar himself, Abbas radiallahu anhu doesn't say nothing. He knows what he's doing. Umar radiallahu anhu, he goes back and he complains to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the same time, he tells him what he said to Abbas. You know, I said this, this to him because I was upset. Just because you are the uncle of the Prophet, you think you are great and you think you are yourself too big. Okay. I told him these words, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar, Umar, don't you know that he's my uncle? An uncle is just like a father. Respecting the uncle is just like respecting my father. You should have respected him for my sake. You shouldn't say these words to him. As your love for me, that should prevent you from saying these things to Abbas. For me, I would say, okay, now look how he's favoring his relatives. Just because he's his uncle. Yes, it is. It is because he's his uncle. He's teaching them the love. Ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah. Love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah. Abu Sufyan who was the leader of the Quraysh. He comes to Medina Munawwara, but subhanallah, he is the leader of the kuffar. The leading person to oppose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and oppose the deen of Allah. His daughter is the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look where Allah puts the hidayah. Not only that she became Muslim, she is the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes to Medina Munawwara. He has to talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about something. So he has his daughter there. So he knocks at the door and he gets into the house. He goes to see his daughter, Um Habiba radiallahu anha. Um Habiba radiallahu anha, of course, she is happy to see her father. She welcomes him in. But quickly she falls the bedding of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she says, sit down. Sit where now? On the ground? Yes, sit down. No, tell me. Why did you fall that? Is it because you thought something is wrong with me? Or, now, still, he's, he's the leader of the Quraysh. So there is some other thinking right now. Or because you think I'm too great to sit on that one. She says you have the najasa of the kufr, of the shirk. And this is the bearing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I cannot allow any mushrik to sit on this one. This is a pure and a clean bearing. I can't allow no najasa of the shirk to touch this thing here. 
He gets upset and he leaves. But she doesn't change her mind. The Najasa of the Kufr is there, is there. Until it will be cleaned, and it was cleaned later on, alhamdulillah. But ahabba lillahi wa abghadar Love for the sake of Allah, and disliking for the sake of Allah. Something that is really missing from our life. And as I said, normally we think, oh, I like these people because, you know, they are good people, so I like them for the sake of Allah. Oh, I like and dislike other people because they oppose Islam. It's for the sake of Allah. As I said, this is a normal situation. One of my teachers used to say, you know, in Urdu, when we write the letters, we say, haqir, ajiz. You know, humble, use the word of humbleness that this is from your servant, this is from the uh, very humble person, from the, uh, a person who's really nothing. So, one of my teachers used to say that when a person writes you these words, when you write him, write him the same word about him. The word that he's using for himself, write the very same words about him and then see what he says. Oh, I'm nothing. So now next time you see him, don't speak, you are nothing. I don't want you to talk. Now see how he feels. He said this same thing himself. But behind that humbleness, there was arrogance. When I say I'm nothing, people say, no, no, mashallah, you are such a great person. Oh, now, now I'm happy to hear this from you. I'm telling you, I tell you I'm nothing. Yeah, I know you are nothing. Now you see what happens. This tells us our love for this person is not for Allah. Is because he cares about me, because he does this to me, because he favors me. If he stops doing this to me, then I won't love him. Regardless if Allah loves him, I won't love him. Is this is Habbalillah? So this is nafs. It's all nafs, and we don't even realize it. The person lives in this position throughout the life. Never realizes that this is what he's doing throughout his life. People end this life in this position and they don't even see it, they don't realize it. They have no one to talk to them. Just like orphans, throughout their lives, no one can explain to him that, son, this is a mistake that you have been making throughout your life. Only when they will go there, they will realize, hear the thought throughout their lives, their love for people was only for the sake of Allah. They hated people only for the sake of Allah. Once they go up there, they will realize the love of all of those people only for, was for the sake of my nafs and hated people only for the sake of my nafs. That was the only thing. When worst enemy of deen and when a mushrik, when a kafir, a person, a person you can see that with every dirt in the world, when he respected me, when he said I'm a great person, I loved him. A person that I knew that it was a person of deen and taqwa and sunnah and sharia and everything and God-fearing person, he said something that I, that I didn't like. I don't like. It's all nafs behind it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are so four signs for iman. To love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. وَأَعْطَى لِلَّهِ And whenever we give, we give for the sake of Allah. وَأَبْغَضَ وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ And whenever we don't give, we don't give it for the sake of Allah. We give for the sake of Allah. Whatever we give, whoever we give, we give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not for our own soul. A person feeds a dog for the sake of Allah, gets the maghfir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you give millions of dollars, but the nafs is there, there is nothing for it. Giving only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once a person will give for the sake of Allah, will give to the sources where he knows by giving in these avenues, it will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm giving it only for the sake of Allah. So whatever he spends, it goes for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنَعَ لِلَّهِ and whenever he refused to give, he refused to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No time to go into these details. But as we look at those details, we can understand this also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, a person who will have these four qualities in him and her, فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَلَ الْإِيمَانِ That person's iman is perfect and complete. 
The point that we understand from this hadith is, is not only physical action, is the, our emotions behind it. Do we carry the love for Allah? Do we have enough love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now whatever we do, even when we are giving things, when we are stopping, when we are rejecting to give, when we love people, greatest emotions, when we love people, when we hate people, if all of this is only for the sake of Allah, which means the love of Allah is greater than all of these things. It's so great. Now when I like someone, it's only because Allah asked me to love. When I don't like someone, it's only because I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me not to love. فَقَدْ إِسْتَكْمَرَ iman. With this type of love for Allah, now of course we can understand this person's iman is perfect and complete. This is the gist of the teaching of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, that the person always pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the pleasure of Allah we can obtain it only when we have that love for Allah that will make us do everything only and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us that love for His sake, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to establish that love in our hearts and act only according to that love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين Just as a point of thinking it came to my mind that when we talk about this love for Allah and uh, disliking for the sake of Allah we see him in the situation of Sahaba Ridwan Allah alayhim ajma'een in those days there was a lot of situations of uh, families, uh, you know, especially in the days of uh, the, uh, in, in those traditions, uh, there was a lot of nikah and talaq, more than one nikah and then there is talaq. But you will always find, even after that, sahaba or sahaba, they are all together. He divorced his daughter and he divorced his son and he, he got his son out. He, Umar radiallahu says to his son, divorce that woman. After that, they are all in the same, in the same safa and the same place. It was because of the same reason, أَحَبَّ لِلَّهِ وَأَبْغَضَ لِلَّهِ And beautiful examples, if we look at it, it's only a reminder, if we look at it, when we look at the seerah and we look at it from this angle, we will see their love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where the nafs was totally out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us and give us that love.